so uh, the first thing we need is some um, black clay and a pin brooch we are going to set the pin brooch a little bit higher than the middle remember it's the thing about it hanging a little bit and we are going to bake it on a light bulb as you can see I have placed my light bulb in a little cradle made out of aluminum foil make sure that you didn't trap any air pockets and then use a piece of fabric with a loose weave to imprint some texture on your clay it will make it look more vintagey antiquey because this whole thing looks very vintagey victorian whatever you want to call it so as soon as you are sure that your um, fabric weave is well imprinted on the clay you will have to do one more cut because obviously the clay will be a little bit deformed but let's take a look at how cool it looks see awesome so remember the clay is on the thickest setting so let's do one more cut to have that edge nice and the base round and then we pre-bake it for 15 minutes after pre-baking we want to uh, sand a little bit those sharp edges and I'm using a 400 grit yeah I didn't bring the water here because it's not a lot of dust but uh, generally speaking don't do that dry do it only with water and now it's time to set the pin so i'm getting another piece of clay on the third thickest setting and i'm going to set the pin uh, your clay has to be about the width of the pin and you place it with some bacon bond you don't want the clay to be that long so make it to reach about half of the circle and uh, kind of slope it bevel it and now it's time to prepare the piece of clay that will go on top of the pin and make it fairly thin about half a millimeter then press the pin in until you can see the clay coming out through those tiny holes because that will be one more point of safety security because the top clay will adhere including uh, those tiny dots and make the top piece uh, narrow enough so it will not go all the way to the ends of the pin and now flatten everything nicely make it flush with the end on top and it's easy to do a nice flush in because you know raw clay on baked clay will always cut itself whenever you roll something over it and then on the inside I am going to bevel it as much as I can using my exacto knife so there wouldn't be a big bulk of clay there and then on the thinnest manageable setting I'm going to cover the entire backing with another sheet of clay I only need to put the bacon bond on the um, raw area now yeah I know I can I should cut there but I'm going to just rip it with my fingers to free the ends of the pin now there you have to be very very careful because you don't want any clay to interfere with the pin being able to be closed or on the other end the pin being able to move so gently trim any excess clay 
in that area and then smooth out using whatever you're using you know that I'm using my little blue paintbrush handle I sure wish I knew what this is made out of because it makes such a wonderful clay roller mini clay roller and it's got that rounded tip and don't forget to arrange it nicely around the ends of the brooch pin and see it's still a tad thick in that area but it will be just fine now let's see about the veiners i am going to show you differences so i have this veiner set that's got some awesome veiners both for leaves and for uh, petals so i'm choosing a leaf that would be good to put three of them on my little brooch base and then I chose a veiner that's supposed to be not a rose but some other flower and I will show you the differences and we will also try a push mold a makings push mold so let's see how the leaf veiner looks like looks awesome let's go for the petal now that's a bit too veiny for a rose i would think let's see how the veining of the rose petal on your palm works in comparison that looks pretty much like a veins you see on a rose petal doesn't it so let's compare nice and delicate and the other one is way too abrupt now let's compare with the push mold and remember if you look back uh if i'm not mistaken it was in the patina uh jewelry set and i will put a link in the description i showed you how to make uh molds from real leaves because if you don't have a veiner like that one um, from which I'm going to use for the leaf you can make one from a regular leaf from your garden or from the park or whatever now you see the, the leaf from the makings does not look that good so let's do the Skinner blends for the leaf and for the rose I am going, going to use one square of alizarin crimson with a quarter square of black for the rose and half a square of jungle with a quarter square of black for the leaf. And now watch this carefully, how you can hurry up your Skinner blend. You see how I'm placing the edge in a diagonal slightly and then the second time I fold it straight. And then once it gets wide enough, I'm going to fold it in a V shape, just like that. And that will extend my middle gradient to pretty much what I need here. And I will do the same thing for the green. See, slightly in a diagonal, then straight then again in a slight diagonal then straight until it gets long enough to do it in a v-shape and then i keep going until it gets long and then i'll simply uh, fold it in two and then get it through the pasta machine again but this time in length make sure you don't trap any air bubbles and go in length not in width to obtain long strips 
now I'm going to make and I didn't uh, show that so the video wouldn't get too long but I made a fan fold rounded log and a jelly roll with the black in the middle for the leaf I'm going to place some aged brass on the base pretty much and one thing you can bake the art alchemy waxes without a problem i forgot to show you that i actually placed some of that fabric on the backing as well i only showed you on the front but uh, yeah place some fabric on the back <laughs> too and then i'm going to also add a little bit of vintage silk just to give it an extra shine you can use of course whatever else you want you don't have to use uh, these exact colors why i used these specifically was because i wanted to obtain a certain final result that would look like a victorian thing now watch this whenever you cut this type of shape this is how you want to hold it uh, because otherwise you will deform it but if you hold it like this when you cut you will not deform it now if you have issues like me to hold straight up such a thin place you can use your acrylic block as a support to cut straight lines down now i'm going to uh, just do my little imprints for now and just place your um, mold texture however you want to call it on top of the clay and press then remove it from the texture and put it aside and we shall work on this here in a minute first we want to cut the outline and those little serrations on the sides and then i will show you how to make a very nice effect on that and you will ask me well if you're going to antique the whole thing with wax on top why did you even bother with the skinner blend because it would not look as good without the Skinner blend or with other colors. There's a specific, remember when I told you about these waxes, is that they change color and effect depending on the background, depending how you layer them and so on. Um, the thing is that you honestly don't have to antique it. If you like the brooch the way it is naturally, you can go ahead and do it like this without antiquing but I'm going to show you how to antique too. So, um, you first must cut the outline of your leaf using your exacto knife. And if you see, I cut it a little bit different on each leaf. There are some more veins inside that sometimes I cut all the way in, so not every leaf would look the same. And I will enhance on some of them, some of the veins. Now let's work those leaves a little bit more. So I'm going to put them on the wax, but before starting to work on them, um, we must first cut some rose petals you see i got rid of the very thin tip i have no idea why i thinned it out so much but you need a little bit of a cone shaped in your log because the petals that are more in the middle are smaller than the ones on the edges now using your bowl stylus and gently flatten the edges on your leaves Oh yeah, all those little serrated parts that you took so much trouble to cut out. Believe me, if you wouldn't have cut them out the way you did, they wouldn't look as good in the final stage as they do. 
we are not trying to perfectly imitate nature here because it is a piece of jewelry that's supposed to look vintage Victorian metallic -y, however you want to call it. I am going to uh, once again reinforce some of the veining because with the bold stylus I kind of smashed it out. But it can be easily fixed. And yes, remember this is my most favorite sculpting tool. It's one of those wax sculpting tools. You can find it in my influencer store. I tried to find the cheapest price on it. I have about three different sets, but uh, I might be using out of maybe 30, I might be using five total. Then press the leaves against your palm also to obtain some very fine veining to make them look a little bit even more uh, natural, even if we don't go for a full natural look. And we are ready to place the leaves. So put them in approximately three tri not really triangular not equidistant but a little bit separate you can make just two of them you can make just a larger one but make sure that they meet in the middle because that's where you are going to place your rows And you can try and do this in just one bake. I prefer to do several bakes, pre-bakes mostly, because I want to have things stay as they should and I wouldn't mess them up. Then I'm going to press gently on the very middle and let it sit for about 10 minutes because remember it uh, the bacon bond thickens and you will have no slippage. And then I'm going to take, and you can entirely skip this uh, thing, I'm going to take some artisan powders and I'm put, putting a little bit of uh, amber in the middle and a little bit of French sage towards the uh, edges just to enhance the look of uh, real rose leaves and that will be under the wax because I will be using uh, mostly transparent wax on these and this is how it will look and it can bake um, once it's baked I am placing a little bit of uh, green brocade of the opal magic uh, you don't have to worry about the very middle because that's going to be covered by the rose so I'm placing the green brocade on the tip and the edges of the leaves. And now let's make our rose. We have the petals fairly uh, equal in thickness. And I chose to make a grandiflora rose, uh, the one that has the tip of the petals very curved because I will have to uh, buff a little bit the final result so I don't want to have to fight with my little cotton cloth among petals but if you do them this way then you will obtain that very fine veining on the petals then I take a dowel and I put a pretty much conical shape on it and you will see why I am doing this then I start forming the inside of the rose. Make sure that the base of the rose uh, that you are uh, building is maybe one millimeter below the end of the dowel there and you will see why in a little bit. But what I need, so first I covered up the inside cone, then I need two half petals if you want to make the beginning of the inner bud and make them a little bit 
at least in one point, wrap around each other. Uh, whenever you're creating a rose, you must make sure that one petal overlays on the next one in each of the um, layers of petals because that is how roses go and i will show you how see i am placing one of the petals but i only stick it on the left side i do not stick the right side then i will place the second petal with the right side overlapping the previous petal and this one i'm going to stick it on both sides properly And when you're in the inner part of the rose, you want to uh, uh, stick the petal fairly close to the upper edge. And yes, I promise you, uh, we will make some irregular roses soon. As flowers go, because I showed you the spring flowers. But we'll do some roses because they are the easiest to make of all polymer clay flowers. At least that's what I think. Uh, when you place the last petal in the circle, remember that you did not stick the right end of the first petal, so you can slide the last one under that edge, and then you have your most inner layer. And then you just keep creating the next ones. I guess I skipped making a few petals. So once again, you just round it up and you insist on the very bottom and on the very top because you want the top of the petal to gently curve outwards. And you see, I'm starting the next, next circle of petals and I um, stick to the previous layer only the left side of the petal. The right side, I leave it unattached to the underlying clay and then I keep going left always keep the uh, black part of the Skinner blend on the bottom so now with the second petal I am going to stick it to the stick it to the underlying uh, clay on both ends and I will just let you watch how I am finishing the rows and then I will start commenting more when it's almost done.
Now, sorry if I'm going a little bit off screen here, but as you know, I have to remove my glasses and to do this kind of stuff. And once I do, I don't see the monitor that good. But um, I'm sure you can still figure out what I'm doing. So I am placing right now the very last row of petals on the rows. And we shall move on to um, the next part on how to actually attach the rows to the rest of the brooch and it's a fairly simple thing to do on roach roses that you want to attach on flat surfaces uh, you can go ahead and uh, work a little bit on the petals but i prefer to finish working on them once i uh, get the rows ready to bake because ideally you bake first the rows and then you attach it to the base to avoid uh, distorting the petals so right now what i am doing is bring the petals a little bit higher so i can do what i need to do at the base of the rows without disturbing them too much so I am attaching them a little bit tighter to the underlying clay. And I'm going from the center outwards. And as I said, you can leave the rose as is. You don't have to antique it. And you can use other colors if you want. I used the alizarin crimson because it gives a beautiful background for the rose gold wax to achieve the effect I wanted. And now take your uh, rigid blade and cut pretty much around the top of the dowel. I didn't do a perfect cut, but that is easily fixable with my thin blade. So see how I have a little bit of a hole right there in the middle. And I will place the rows on a piece of wax paper and finish uh, this time arranging the petals in the final position I want them to be in. And then pre-bake the rows for 20 minutes. And this is when you arrange the rows exactly how you want it to be. Because the way you will bake it, that is how it will stay. Now, the, my rose is baked. And you can see it's fairly sturdy. So I'm going to make a kind of plug, if you want. With a... A smaller plug in the middle that would go in that little hole that's at the base of the rows and place some bacon bond there and my bacon bond is almost empty I'll have to start another bottle <laughs> uh, so place some bacon bond there and smear it over all the cut end and then make your plug don't leave the the smaller plug area too tall because you don't want it to be that tall so cut it to about the size that will go in the hole at the base of the rose and then place it in and press it in trim any excess until you get about to have about half a millimeter left on that base and trim the excess all around you'll do a final excess trimming after the rose is attached and now place some more bacon bond on the very base of it and place it on the base of the brooch you can gently press on the rose because it's baked and it's relatively sturdy so it will not uh, get deformed 
and now you do the fine trimming of excess clay I'm trying to get it on camera as much as I can because it's kind of like an under thing and then we'll make those little uh, fall leaves that surround the um, rose that were covering the bud when the rose was in a bud and for that I am going to flatten some of my uh, green clay remnants and then cut some long leaf shapes and I will show you how to actually shape them you need five of them and they are very easy to shape you just take your needle tool and do that on both edges and then take the bowl stylus and kind of flatten it against your palm then you turn it around and you use your bowl stylus again and then you turn it around one more time because the part that will be up will be the part where you did not do the the needle thing and then you place it under the rose make sure it's not too long if it is too long you can uh, rip off the end and then place it by securing it from underneath not on top when you place it you place your uh, ball stylus under it and that's where you secure it to the part of raw clay that surrounds the base of the rose and then place all five of them at approximate equal distances and, and then bake once it is baked and cooled I'm going to place some rose gold that's in the metallic line of the Art Alchemy waxes and I am going to place a very thin layer of it mostly on the um, raised areas of all the petals and then I will top that off with vintage silk because I want the rose gold to be mostly on the raised areas not on all the uh, surface of the petal equally uh, I am first before applying the vintage silk I am going to apply some white gold on those little I'm not going to use the Latin term but uh, yeah those little five things that are under the rose I have one of those brain freezes I don't remember the English word for that but anyway so you place some white gold on that and as i said you don't have to antique it you can leave it as is so white gold those things and now you can apply because in the meantime uh the white gold half hardened so now apply some vintage silk remember this is opal magic so it is half transparent and then work it in with a paintbrush and whatever uh, the rose gold did not harden will mix a little bit with the vintage silk and will create a beautiful rosy gold haze on the flower and then I will get a little bit more white gold and apply it on the most 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 raised areas of the leaves not all over and 
just a pinch on the petals as well but again very little and just on the most raised areas of the veining you see i'm actually tapping it i am not uh, swiping with my finger i'm tapping and then I will put a pinch of green brocade on top of the white gold that I put on the leaves. The green brocade is also an opal magic line and it's also a transparent wax. And then all you have to do is to wait for it to harden. And then it's almost done. Let's get the cotton cloth and gently buff it and now you see why i wanted these specific rounded petals because it's much easier to buff a grandiflora rose than a regular rose so buff it until you get that nice shiny metal look and do a gentle buffing on the leaves as well you can do it just with a lot of attention it doesn't need a lot of buffing actually just a few swipes with a cotton cloth will bring up the shine of the uh, wax and you can put some wax on the back of the leaves if you don't like the way they look when you turn the bro brooch upside down but uh, it's not absolutely necessary because the way the brooch is made with the pin where it is it will not uh, bow and get separated from the blouse but pretty much this is it and it's your delicate rose gold rose brooch happy clean <laughs>